very lucky to have uh, such an experienced and uh, senior minister uh, to look after our sector. Um, so with, uh, without further ado, I'll introduce Chris, who will say a few words. Thanks. Can you all hear me? Okay. I suppose that's better. Thank you very much. Uh, look, what we do support is the industry and what we do support is investment. And where we're at is that we have done a number of things. We have finally bitten the bullet about having the ap appropriate uh, system of controls on the strategic land of New South Wales, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. I won't, I won't go through it all with you, uh, yeah, because it would take uh, a good half an hour or so. Uh, but it's all on the website, or if you need more information, you're free to contact my office or contact uh, Rob, uh, and any more information that you want uh, is available. What I really am here to do as the Minister is to give you the overarching image of what we are prepared to do and where we see it all going. And that's what uh, I want to say. And selling that very positive message, we're open for investment. So uh, it's not just here in New South Wales, but it's overseas as well. The Premier, when he went to India two weeks ago, uh, found there was considerable interest in India in the development of uh, various minerals here in New South Wales, and he was able to, uh, to talk them up a lot. So where are we at? As at yesterday, our uranium exploration uh, applications closed. Uh, the last word I had on it was some uh, 32 companies including the Aboriginal Land Council, uh, had lodged uh, applications. I don't have the final figure that will be supplied in the next couple of days. In the Macquarie Arc, which is that area around the, uh, from Parks, Orange, coming up the back of central New South Wales, our department, my department, has identified $213 billion worth of gold and copper and associated minerals. Uh, and it was that especially which uh, aroused a lot of interest in India when the Premier was there uh, and which we are keen to see developed and which we are keen to encourage investment in. And all that information is available through Rob, uh, th through uh, my department as to what the initial uh, geoscientific and mineral exploration shows. But if anybody's interested in gold, Anybody interested in copper? Anybody's interested in rare minerals? Anybody's interested in uranium? Uh, there are huge opportunities. And of course, iron ore. Now, all of this, of course, for every, every company in this room and every potential investor, depends upon what they see as the future demand and what they see as the expected price, because it's a, uh, it's a free market. But the resources are there, and the demand is there. I mean, uh, but we still have in this state, confirmed only two weeks ago, a AAA credit rating for investment. There are only seven other destinations. Not even the United States government has now got the AAA credit rating, remember? There are only seven other destinations, presumably Luxembourg and a few places, Switzerland, which have the AAA credit rating. No other state has it. Queensland's lost it. We've still got it here, which makes it such a secure and attractive place for investment to investors, to bankers, to superannuation funds, to pension funds, who can all look at New South Wales and say, yes, it is a great place for investment, and yes, there are great opportunities to invest here. And, as you've seen, the federal government relaxed the uh, uranium laws so that we can now export to even the, the one major market where we couldn't export to, which was India. So China, India, Japan, if it, but look, not only do we have then for the uranium, potentially, the iron ore, the, the gold and the copper, but we've got continuing the coal. And there is still a great deal of coal in the Gunnedah Basin and in, in the Hunter area. So uh, we, need, we need the coal, we need the gas. And in the area of coal seam gas, we have as much as Queensland. Now, Queensland's had huge developments in coal seam gas. Just a couple of figures. 18,500 jobs in Queensland dependent upon it. We've got 230. We're 10 years behind Queensland in the development of the coal seam gas. There are huge opportunities. Our job is to make sure that the whole system, and my job is to make sure the whole system works evenly, fairly and transparently, and delivers a result for the people of this state. 
the end of the day, that's what we want from our point of view as a government to develop the state's resources so that the state gets the benefit from them, not just in terms of royalties, but in terms of employment, in terms of taxation, in terms of the economic development that flow through to the regions. And we've developed a policy of giving financial assistance through, through mining to the regions uh, to, to ensure that New South Wales gets a benefit. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's basically all I wanted to say. I do want to assure you we, uh, we are open to, uh, to make sure that business gets good opportunities. But as I say, uh, I'm also taking that message to China and Korea. Uh, and uh, the, uh, it's because it's a worldwide market, it's a global economy, and New, and New South Wales has got to play its part.